Starbase is a truly amazing place, and seeing it from the air really helps put things into perspective. Well, there have been loads of changes and lots going on here since we last flew, so we flew again. Some buildings have grown up, some have been demolished, a whole lot of things have been moved around, and of course, we've had loads of stacking and de-stacking and restacking with good old Ship 25 and Booster 9 there. But thankfully, they're restacked, and that means full stack testing is back on the menu. What's up, everyone? I'm Jack Byer with NASA Spaceflight, and this is your Starbase Update, Flyover Edition. The first thing we usually encounter when we fly over Starbase is SpaceX's Massey's Outpost, where they do cryogenic proof testing and the occasional destructive cryogenic testing with test tanks. Since our last flyover, SpaceX has done a great deal of work to make the site a bit more complete. This included construction of a new retention wall and a new berm seems to be being built as well. A lot of equipment has also been removed on the southwest side of the complex, and groundwork is underway there as well. It could be that SpaceX is about to put more stands here for testing, or perhaps there'll be yet another new building here. Who knows? Speaking of new buildings, a new one is going up on the northwest side of Massey's as well. Given a relatively small size, it seems like it might just be for basic storage, but hey, it's always nice to have a place to store hardware on location with active testing like this. Of course, there are also test tanks and vehicles at Massey's too. In the time since the last flyover, we've seen Booster 10 come here for testing, then go back to the production site to get its engines, Ship 29 also going through testing here and then going back to the Rocket Garden, and now we have Booster 11 here being tested as well. In case you don't remember, this place was barely functional just a year ago, so this is quite the change of pace, and it definitely looks like SpaceX is adding more and more capabilities to this facility. Now let's move on to Starbase proper, specifically the Sanchez site, where characteristically there is a lot going on. Do you remember when SpaceX wanted to take its own oxygen and nitrogen out of the air and put up a propellant production plant with its own air separation unit? Yeah, um, it's gone. Well, kinda. Only the air separation unit tower remains as of right now. After not seeing any activity at this place for a long time, it very much seems like SpaceX has totally given up on this idea and is removing it. But who knows, maybe they're just moving it someplace else, or they'll put it back at a later time, in another place. Plans change, focus changes, it's all part of the process here. Also at the Sanchez site, teams are building several ring structures that we've discussed quite a lot in the past. This white one here, we're confident now, it is for booster engine installation. And we'll talk about this more in a bit. But the two other rings, painted in black, have been more of a mystery, and now we can see one of them has had booster hold down arms installed. These are the same type of arms that are on the orbital launch mount. This is kind of a big deal because of the potential implications. From the outside, it doesn't really look like the deck of the orbital launch mount, but somehow it does have hold down arms on it. These types of hold down arms aren't present on the engine installation stands, for example. So if this is a stand for boosters, what kind of stand? Maybe for static fires? That would need a large amount of infrastructure. Where would it go? There's lots of implications here. See, I told you. Anyway, I guess I'll just have to say the standard phrase at this point, which is, we'll just have to wait and see. If you have any theories of what these rings are for, maybe put it in the comments and we'll see if we can come to a consensus. Right next to the Sanchez site is the Rocket Garden, and the only thing that's been pretty consistent here is the presence of Booster 4 and Ship 20. These two sort of seem like kids that graduated high school or college and don't want to move away from home yet. Another thing that hasn't changed places since our last flyover is Ship 28 which is still hogging the engine installation stand. Poor Ship 29, that arrived here a couple weeks ago and must be anxiously awaiting for its turn to go on the engine stand and have its own engines installed. We've seen work being done on Ship 28 basically constantly, so hopefully we see it move to the launch site for a static fire test campaign here soon. Moving on now, next door to the Sanchez site is of course the production site. And the most obvious things to see here are the high and mega bays, plus also the Star Factory building that SpaceX currently has under construction. In the time since our last flight, the Star Factory building has been expanded well up to Highway 4. Plus, now the first part of the expansion is joined to the original Star Factory building, which looks tiny in comparison. You can also see lots of groundwork well underway to prepare for the expansion where the former production tents 1 and 2 were located. The new mega bay has also seen quite a lot of work, 
Now the top floor is being built and the roof is starting to be put in place. Also, the outside panels for the walls of this bay have gone all the way up the sides of the structure. This new mega bay has gone up exceptionally quickly, but don't be surprised if SpaceX now takes quite a bit of time to get it fully outfitted and until we see all of that scaffolding disappear. This is the sort of flow we saw with Mega Bay 1 when it was built. The main structure went up fast, but fully outfitting it takes time, especially when you're building vehicles in the bay at the same time as you're building the bay. Let's look at the first Mega Bay once again for example. Teams are still working, even now, on the upper floors and scaffolding is still visible there. But again, unlike the second Mega Bay, this first one has vehicles inside of it. Booster 10 is sitting on the engine installation stand that we mentioned a while ago. This one is a different one from the one mentioned, and it was built in the summer, brought here, and then installed shortly before our last flight in September. Not only is it being used for engine installation, but it is also very useful to work on other parts of the booster. For example, it appears that one of the carbon dioxide cylinders for the fire suppression system on the booster has been installed on booster 10, and there may well be other things that have been worked on or installed just because now the booster is in a very accessible location. Since the last time we flew, we also have had Booster 12 being stacked here, and Booster 13's LOX tank is also almost complete. In this latest flyover, we can also see more work having been done on what appears to be some sort of door structure for the Mega Bay. If and when that finally goes up, it's going to be a little bit sad, so enjoy the views while we have them. Next door to the Mega Bays is the High Bay, and here, well, more of the usual, with lots of vehicles going in and out. We now have Ship 30 undergoing thermal protection system tile installation, as well as a new ship, Ship 31, completed and currently located on the other corner of the building, getting hardware and being worked on. Meanwhile, on the other side of the high bay, Ship 32 stacking not only has begun, but it is also well underway. At the time of our flight, the common dome of this ship was right outside and waiting for stacking, so it's pretty much halfway through stacking right now and should be complete fairly soon. Also at the production site, specifically here in the ring yard, you may notice a booster forward section with a hot stage ring on top. But don't get too excited, this is just the hot stage ring test article that had been at Massey's and has now been moved back to the production site. Now let's move down Highway 4 from the production site just a little bit and take a look at this massive expansion SpaceX is building to Boca Chica Village. New streets and new homes are being built, and it also looks like groundwork is about to occur parallel to Highway 4, much further down the road. This is where, originally, the village was supposed to expand to, way back in the 60s and 70s, but it never got there as a hurricane kind of swept through and seriously affected the area, halting all development. We can also see that SpaceX has removed the solar farm at the site of the former tracking station. I say former because the solar farm is not the only piece of equipment to go away around here though. A couple of months ago, SpaceX removed the two tracking antennas that were located next to this location. It seems like there's interest in building something here, so perhaps that'll be even more houses for employees to live in. From the air in this area, we can also see a fancy new concrete pad SpaceX has built for parking its hovercrafts. Yeah, that's right, you heard me, hovercrafts. This concrete pad is where they park hovercrafts used to shuttle employees to and from South Padre Island across the shipping channel. This takes merely a few minutes versus the almost hour it takes with a car, so it's a nice thing to have when you're in a hurry. Also in this area, we have the HLS mock-up. Everyone say hi, HLS nose cone. It has had its aero covers removed and was visible here during our flyover. But soon after that, this little fellow was moved over to Remedios Avenue next to the Rocket Garden. Maybe it's going there as another piece of display, or maybe it's just more convenient to have it there. Who knows? It would be really cool to have some sort of presentation involving it, but that's probably just wishful thinking. Let's move on now to the launch site where so much has been going on, and it's really been quite a ride, especially for Ship 25. We can see it from the air, but we are actually very close to not seeing a full stack at the time of our flight. That's because teams restacked and destacked the vehicles earlier in the week, all while SpaceX tweeted that a launch rehearsal would be happening, which of course it didn't. Workers started inspecting the booster and the ship and looking at all sorts of places on either vehicle, and then, they were restacked again this Friday, literally as I was driving to the airport for our photo flight. So what's up SpaceX, are you going to do that wet dress rehearsal or what? We do have some road closures scheduled for this week, and SpaceX recently tweeted yet again about performing a launch rehearsal, but it also mentioned additional pre-flight tests ahead of its rehearsal. This was a bit confusing, but it does sound like a full wet dress rehearsal is a few more days away than we previously thought. 
Just this Sunday, we had a couple partial propellant loading tests. This is where the ground system loads propellants on the vehicles, but only fill the tanks partially. You can see the partial load by the amount of frost on the booster and ship. In fact, the ship was barely filled at all as no frost was visible, but there was clearly some activity with the related GSC that fuels it. So perhaps if they loaded anything, it was just the bottom of each tank. In any case, it wouldn't be surprising if we see SpaceX do more tests like these before the launch rehearsal. You know what I always say, more data, more better. Speaking of gathering more data, another interesting thing that happened this week was the appearance of the Fish and Wildlife Service here on location in Starbase. It's not super obvious what was going on, but clearly it would make sense if they're doing some additional work and gathering some additional data before approving SpaceX's water deluge system along with the FAA. At the launch site, there's a bunch of other stuff going on as well. Remember all of that groundwork on the suborbital side that we thought might end up being for something interesting? Well, it's, it's a parking lot. Yeah, it's, it's just more parking spaces. It's just a big parking lot. It's just a, it's just a parking lot. Another, another test pad or something, suborbital pad C, that would have been cool, but no. It's, it's just a parking lot. At least as a consolation prize, this week we had some fun with Ship 26. Even though it's an abomination, in the last week it was tested and made some fire and noise. First, it conducted a single engine pre-burner test, and then that was followed a few days later by a single engine static fire test. We were a bit perplexed at first as to why this test was done the way that it was, but thankfully, SpaceX tweeted that this was a test of a demonstration of a, quote, flight-like startup for a Starship deorbit burn, end quote. So now we know what was going on. This is some really interesting testing to see have happen, so much so that I dare say it's a redemption for Ship 26. You really don't want to have a Starship stuck on orbit and out of control and unable to deorbit after getting it there, so obviously this is something SpaceX is going to want to nail down. Speaking of redemption, this static fire ship with Ship 26 was absolutely beautiful, and thanks to your support, I was able to place a 4K, 120 frame a second capable camera extra close and get some awesome slow-mo of this Raptor engine firing up. I've dreamt of this shot for years. Look at the shock diamond. Ah! For, forbidden ice cream cone. I don't even know. It's so beautiful. I can't. I can't even. It's so beautiful. So, as you can see, there is a lot visually going on in Starbase, both from the air and from the ground. SpaceX is moving at a characteristically breakneck pace, and while we may be waiting for the paperwork to be completed for Starship's next flight, we at the very least expect to soon see a full wet dress rehearsal, which means a fully fueled, fully frosty, full stack Starship which is not only really exciting, but also a critical test ahead of its next flight. Now, there are some road closures scheduled for this week, so hopefully we see that test done soon and SpaceX gets the data it needs. But until then, thanks for watching. That's it for this week. And as always, be excellent to each other. Also, I got new sunglasses. Do you like my new sunglasses? There's their new sunglasses. Watch, I can do a video with my sunglasses. I'm doing a video with my sunglasses. Oh wait, that was a photo. Now I'm doing a video with my sunglasses. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Video glasses, who knew? So obviously we had a wet dress rehearsal during the editing of this video. That's right, it got all frosty. They did a wet dress rehearsal, they did it. Next up launch, let's go.